Hey, what's up? My name is Rob. I play in Rust, bass in Rust, sorry, and I play uh, guitar and die alone. Originally from Alberta, moved out here back in 2000 to uh, Mississauga, and I've been kind of an Ontario lifer ever since. So growing up, I uh, growing up, my dad was a uh, my dad was an 80s metalhead. My mom listened to a lot of country, kind of got the best of both worlds from the hair metal and then, you know, into that. Um, out of that came, out of the hair metal was like, you know, the first band I really remember was Motley Crue. That was like my fucking, when I was a kid, that was untouchable. And then I had an uncle, and my uncle was like, okay, that stuff's cool, but check this out. And he gave me um, Slayer Seasons in the Abyss. And I was like, oh, what the fuck? And then out of that came, you know, Pantera, Sepultura, got into the thrash metal. So, like, never really grew up on anything else. It was just straight into fucking hair metal and then straight into, like, thrash. Then from thrash, it went into death metal, went into, it was, then I got into hardcore. So, my influences growing up, like, Motley Crue is definitely a huge one for me. I love the attitude, like, Livewire. It's like one of the best hardcore songs that's not a hardcore song. Like it would be fucking meant to do, to redo that one. And then once I got into instruments and started playing, um, I started on drums first, that was my first instrument. And playing drums, it was like, you know, um, I kind of started off with like learning Metallica songs and stuff like that. It was kind of the way that went. And then once I transitioned into guitar, I transitioned into guitar right around the time that Hate Breed Satisfaction came out. And as soon as I heard those riffs, like the Before Dishonor riff, I was like, I got to play that. Like Metallica was fun and all that stuff was fun, but like when I heard Hate Breed for the first time, I was like, I need to play that. And from then on, it just kind of spiraled out and then hardcore it was. So what got me into hardcore, um, we touched about a question too a little bit, so. Hatebreed. The first time I heard Hatebreed, that was my gateway band into hardcore. And then after Hatebreed, it was, um, I heard Hatebreed and I was like, hey, I need more of this. Where can I get more of this? And from there I found Madball, which then found Agnostic Front, which then, you know, I was like, okay, well, obviously the east side's kind of where it's at. So where are we out on the, on the east coast? So then, you know, Buried Alive came in, Slugfest came in, Disrepair came in, uh, Chokehold came in, and then um, obviously later on, no warning bands like that came in and i really just kind of every time i die when every time i die first broke that was a huge band for us too um my brothers and i when we were kids every time i die was a huge band when they first broke for us um so basically yeah i i heard hate breed and then i just needed more and i needed to figure out you know where is this coming from where did it come from where is it going and then from there it kind of you know you kind of figure out the segregation, you know, with the Midwest scene where you got the death threats and integrities and bands like that. Then you go to the West Coast where eventually you get terror and you get a lot of the, the West Coast vibes from. So it's really like a very passionate, you know, aggressive scene that just kind of, once I got into it, once I fell in love with it, that was it for me. I needed to know everything about it, where it came from, what it's going, and then still constantly looking up new bands, constantly looking up everything. So what got me into hardcore was hate breed. What keeps me in hardcore is everybody. <laughs> Give her. All right, first show. Um, first concert I ever attended to, I was six years old, and my old man took me to see uh, Alice Cooper and Judas Priest in Toronto. And uh, it's kind of sp like, I don't really remember it, obviously, because I was fucking six, but... Um, history books indicate that that was the last show Rob Halford played with Judas Priest before he quit for a few years. So it was kind of like a sentimental thing. And yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I don't have a, I don't have a wussy first show. <laughs> it wasn't Britney Spears, nothing like that. So I actually pride myself on having a decent first show. Um, and then my first hardcore show, believe it or not, was, um, so I grew up out west. And out west, in like the late 90s, Calgary is always, or out west in general, is like kind of behind the times compared to like the Toronto scene. So like when I got into hate breed in like 97, 98, that's when all the kids were stuck on like Corn and Limp Bizkit. Because that's when those bands were starting to come out and break and the Deftones and stuff like that. Which, don't get me wrong, I loved all those bands too, but like I found hardcore that way too. And like, 
So they were a little bit behind the times. So like we didn't get a lot of hardcore shows out there. And if we did, I couldn't go to them because I wasn't old enough. So once we moved here, I still wasn't old enough. So like my group of friends in high school, they would all go to hardcore shows and tell me about how awesome they were. I'm like, all right, well, fuck all y'all. So I didn't get to go to a hardcore show until 2005. And it wasn't even a hardcore show. It was actually a metal show that Throwdown played. So it was As I Lay Dying, Throwdown, All That Remains, and Winter Solstice. So All That Remains, or uh, As I Lay Dying, it was, they were still doing Frail Worlds Collapse, so it was before Shadows of Security. And then Throwdown is just before Vendetta. And then All That Remains, it was still a few years before the fall of Ideal, so they were still kind of a newer band and just breaking. Um, so it was a good show, <laughs> but I went for Throwdown because I was like, I had my first opportunity to see a hardcore band. So I was like, all right, let's go check that out. And that was my first hardcore show. All right, some of my favorite shows. Um, no particular order because, oh my goodness, stretching them out a little bit. Um, the first time I saw the Acacia Strain was probably my favorite time. They were still touring Continent, DL was still in the band. And uh, when they sound checked, and uh, my brother Rick and I heard that guitar tone, <laughs> we were like, all right, that's it. We give up. <laughs> like, that was, they were, that was a, they were a fucking weapon that night. Um, and then, I've been lucky, like, we got to see, um, Another one of my favorite shows was Parkway Drive at the Reverb. It was our first time ever from Australia, so like Killing With a Smile, Horizons, I wasn't after, like wasn't even thought of yet. So that's when they were like really coming over here to fuck shit up. And they packed so many people into the Reverb. From Australia. Yeah. And they packed so many fucking people into the Reverb that you couldn't even fit a shoehorn in there. Like it was like wall to wall. And like by the last song, everybody was on stage. All the instruments got unplugged. All the members of Parkway were crowd surfing and like everyone was screaming and singing. Like it was like, I mean, it was also the first time I saw Stick to Your Guns too, which was really, um, they were just coming, they just put out Comes from the Heart. So we were like, oh, what the fuck? And hearing Jesse Barnett for the first time, we were like, all right, that's a hardcore front man right there. And he's still one of my favorite vocalists today. Like, I love watching Stick to Your Guns play live. Anytime I get to see Stick to Your Guns, in case you're strained, those are always my favorite shows. And Terror. Can't forget about Terror. Anytime I see Terror is a good time. And that'll lead into the next question because it's one of the craziest things I've ever seen at a show. Alright. Uh, craziest thing that's ever, that I've ever seen at shows. Um, not really like, I don't know, like the craziest, but like a really cool, crazy moment, I guess. Um, I got to see uh, Damage Plan in their last, uh, the last Canadian show. So that was like a week before Dimebag was killed. Yep. So when we got there, cool. the bus was, their bus was parked at the Phoenix. It was at the Phoenix with Shadows Fall and The Haunted. It was a sick show. It was great, fantastic show. But so the bus was parked, so Dimebag was on the bus, they were, he was sick, he wouldn't come out, like wouldn't do anything. So we go inside the venue, go to all the merch and all that cool shit, and then we walk by and saw Dimebag walking. It's like, so I just kind of casually, you know, screamed at him. And he comes over and he's like, hey brother, how you doing? Shook my hand, gave me a guitar pick. The guitar picks up my mom's. And I was like, what the fuck? So you guys like, autograph on it? Yeah, yeah, most random encounter I've ever had in my life. He fucking off like the wind and then like he died a week later. So we were like, shit. But yeah, it was really cool. That's awesome. That was cool. And then um, fast forward to a funny thing. Um, my brother and I saw Terror fucking years ago. I forget. It might have been Keepers of the Faith era, maybe just after. Um, it was at the Hard Luck in Toronto, and there was like there wasn't a huge attendance. I don't think the show was promoted very well, so there wasn't like huge attendance. And I forget what song it was, but some dude, Scott had yelled for stage dives. Some dude jumped up and did a stage dive, but there was nobody. So right into the fucking back wall, like <laughs> right gone. See you later. And we were like, what the fuck? And the dude got up like nothing. Like, he had, like, super energy. It was wild. <laughs> we were like, okay. Um, yeah, it was, you know, very random, random, random occurrences he had shows. Um, and then, you know, other crazy moments. Nah, not really a whole lot. Like, memorable-wise. I mean, the crazy shit that always happens at shows. But, like, I don't know. I think the first time I saw Hatebreed, that was crazy. <laughs> like, to me, that was crazy. Um... 
I know, that's pretty much about it. A cool moment and then a sketchy moment. There you go. Uh, past and current bands. All right, so past bands, uh, early 2000s. I played in a metalcore band up in Sudbury. <laughs> I lived in Sudbury, don't ask me why. It's a whole fucking other thing, but I played in a metalcore band up there. Uh, the band was called Sautrium. Didn't really do anything, played a bunch of shows. I think after I quit, they did one run from like BC and back. They made a record that never came out, and that was the end of that. Uh, and then fast forward, um, I didn't play in any bands at all, like even throughout high school and stuff, like high school bands, you know, like took my chance to try to be a singer in like a post-hardcore band and shit like that, but I uh, didn't get seriously back into music until, um, until Rick and I and the whole Rust thing happened. And then I got into that and that's obviously, was a past band, current band, and then from there I actually joined Born Without Hope for a bit, so I played bass for them. Uh, just before their show with All Out War, and then I played a few more shows after that, Brick by Brick Run, and then uh, we did a Billy Club Sandwich show, did a couple of shows, and then uh, that was kind of the end, and now they're back, so I'm super stoked. The new reincarnation of Born Without Hope is really stoked, I'm really stoked to see it. All the love for Adrian and Chris, shout out Adrian and Chris, and shout out the new members, that's fucking pretty hype for them. Um, and then Die Alone actually happened, um, so Connor Keen and Connor Keen, Bobby and Yoshi and I, um, kind of formed over the pandemic and uh, there were some leftover songs that Kean and Connor had so we worked on that and Die Alone came out of that so we've been doing that and uh, yeah those are my past and current bands just plugging away Russ has got a new record coming out soon so we'll uh, keep that on the hush but video. oh yeah and the video fuck so Russ just dropped a new video for Chokehold um, it was filmed so the set was filmed everything was done here in Hamilton so rep in Hamilton um, the show was filmed at Doors, and then uh, the Hostage show, so shout out Hostage, shout out that night. Uh, Scabs Off, Juggernaut, that was a fucking huge night. Huge show too, I mean, you were there. <laughs> it was a fucking, <laughs> that show was pretty hard. So that was a good set. Um, and then the rest of it was filmed in, uh, actually here at Main Stage. Uh, we filmed the rest of it here with uh, MJD, he's a Toronto director. Um, he's done a lot of cool shit. He's done videos for, like Alice in Chains and Tegan and Sarah. And he's, Shot videos from Metal Blade Records. Yeah, he's done a lot of cool shit, so definitely a Shout out to MJD, he's a good, good guy. Um, so he worked with us, and then, yeah. And then now we got the new record that's getting ready to come out, and we got that run planned in August with uh, D Block. Uh, louder! Holy shit. Uh, so we got the run planned in August with D Block and, uh, with D -Block and a band from out west called Plead. I call them Canada's Harm's Way. They're fucking unreal. They're a juggernaut young band. They're fucking sick. They're gonna be sick. And then all the shows, we got some huge bands. My favorite lineup is gonna be in Hamilton. It's with uh, Living Nightmare, which is Jay Scarvino and Rogers' new band. Yep. Super so check them out. So shout out Jay, shout out Rogers. Um, and then we got Hostage on the bill, obviously, because Sandy. So all the love in the world for Sandy and the Hostage boys. Oh, Always yeah. a good song when I get to be around them. And then Dialo is playing that set as well. And then we got the tour package with Plead, D Block, and Rust. So. That's gonna be a banger show. I can't wait for Hamilton to come out and represent for oh, that one. Sure. Yeah, oh, you're gonna be there? Yep. Let's go. It's gonna be a fun show. Yeah. And yeah, that's it. Uh, what do I like most about being a musician? Um, I think the most thing I like about, well, what I like the most about being a musician is, I mean, there's two different avenues, right? There's a creative avenue, like creating is fun. I love writing songs and I love doing, you know, being a part of that. There's nothing better than like writing a sick mosh part and then you hear it back and you're like, oh yeah. Like when I listen to stuff, like bands I listen to, like if I hear like the chugs or if I hear like, you know, a sick mosh part or a breakdown, like, and it makes me smile, like you can visibly see me get excited over that. That part's cool. And then there's a the whole other side to it too, you know, the camaraderie, especially in hardcore, right? Like hardcore to me and anybody that knows me, um, like, you've probably seen my kids come out. Like, I started bringing my kids out to shows when I can now and stuff. Like, hardcore to me is so much more than just the music. Like, I love the music, don't get me wrong. But it's the values that I was taught. Yep. But I didn't learn them until later on in life. So, I didn't learn them at a pivotal. Like, I learned, that, I learned what I needed to when I needed it. Like, I will give yeah. that credit to hardcore. But, like, for, like, my kids, right? Like, I want my kids to have those values. The values of camaraderie, community, you know, your friend is down, you pick them up. The rules of the pit, right? Somebody falls, you pick them up. Like, 
I want my kids to grow up with the same values. So to me, that's the most important part about being a musician to me is being able to, at least in whatever way that I can or my bands can or anybody you know around me can, try and influence that and kind of push for that as much as possible. I got a good friend of mine that likes to talk about New Jacks and how they don't show love for the scenes and you know and it's really it's really true like yeah. there are you I find that like the old style version of like the old heads and the old school hardcore guys like I'm not really like an old like I'm an old head I guess to a point compared now but like still relatively new or like I can kind of you know put one foot in one way or the other but seeing the differences in my group my, my friend group you know the camaraderie the community everything that i want hardcore to be and then you see the actual new jacks that are coming up that don't appreciate they don't have the appreciation that we do they were never taught the values that we were taught you know they don't have that appreciation sense of community so for me that's very important to me and that's what i like the most about being able to do what we do is try and contribute in any way that we can and race like marsh bars because let's be real <laughs> like, that's fucking that's key right there and then in terms of disliking what i dislike the most i mean honestly i really want to try to you know just be the best person put the best foot forward as much as possible so like disliking things i mean i don't really dislike anything about being a musician i kind of you know there's good things and bad things that come with it um if i had to pick something i dislike it would probably be the inner politics of it because it can get pretty political sometimes and for no good reason really i mean at the end of the day we're all friends we're all supposed to be friends we're all supposed to be a family and a community so what politics should there be you know you got friends in bands they need help you help them out you got friends that need a show you help them out you you know you're playing a show in someone's town you respect that town like it should be pretty simple but i feel like you know the message itself i think since the pandemic started to come back a little bit more where people are starting to appreciate that because music was gone for so long so i can only hope that like it keeps improving and building on that but at the end of the day like it's still very much a real thing. Like there are political people, there are you know people that are out for themselves and don't care about anybody else. And for me, like I'm sorry, but that's a that's a no-fly zone for me. Like I love my friends, I love my family, I love my community. Everybody's considered family to me. I mean, anybody that I've ever talked to and anybody that knows me at a show, that's it. Like hugs, high fives, and nothing but love. Like, no matter what, that's it. My favorite food is Osmos. <laughs> Bro, chicken on the rocks with extra sauce. That's my vibe. My useless talent. So if anybody had to pick, anyone that knows me knows my useless talent is probably my ability to quickly come up with dad jokes on the spot. It's pretty fucking stupid. I'm not gonna lie, it is pretty dumb. But uh, yeah, that's my most useless talent. And then second runner up will probably be my, uh, my useless knowledge of movies and music. I can speak in movie quotes for fucking ever. <laughs> and anyone that knows me, chances are I probably do. And then everyone looks at me like I got 10 heads and they've never seen the movie I'm talking about. So those are my useless talents. <laughs> All right, dad joke. Dad joke, dad joke, dad joke. Uh, what did Batman say when the waitress asked what he wanted to drink? Just oh. ice. Bada boom. All right, I want to thank the boy Stevie R for having me on here. It was a fucking honor and a pleasure. It was great, stronger than ever. It's fucking hard. I'm so stoked to be a part of this. Um, also, want to shout out Ontario Hardcore, of course, because you know you got to. Um, some really close, you know, close bands of ours. Uh, shout out Temper Tantrum, shout out Gavel, shout out Dialone, shout out Living Nightmare, shout out Hostage, shout out Reliever, shout out Single Wound, shout out, I guess my own band, <laughs> we'll shout out Rust. Um, you know, we'll shout out Friction, and we'll shout out, you know, Toronto Hardcore, Hamilton Hardcore, Ontario Hardcore, Boom Without Hope, all those guys. Uh, Northern Hit Squad, I'm gonna say some love for my boy AK Ray and Psycho Dave. Um, yeah, shout out Hardcore in general. Just It's been a pleasure. It's been an honor. Thank you so much for having me on here. And fucking can't wait to do it again. Hope to see you all at the show soon. And take it easy.